power al qudra or al quwwa power is the attribute by which allah creates and destroys anything possible creates means brings it into existence destroys here means renders it non-existent anything possible we'll mention some things that are possible inshallah ta'ala here's an example allah says ya ayyuhal ladhina utul kitaba aminu bima nazzalna musaddiqan lima ma'akum it means all those who are given the book Believe in what Qur'an we have revealed, verifying what you have of the Torah, before we remove the contours of faces and make those faces become as their backs, like meaning the back of the head. Allah tells them, believe before Allah punishes some by removing the contours of their faces. That means, like, the dimensions of your faces. How's your nose and your lips and your cheeks? And then he makes your face like the back of your head. That's possible. That's something that's possible. Allah has the power to create anything possible. It is called this attribute of Allah, al qudra and al quwa They both mean power. Ability and power as attributes of the slave are the same. Ability and power as attributes of the slave are the same. As for the attributes of Allah, we say that he is ascribed with qudra, power, or quwa which is power. And we do not use the expression istita'a, which usually translates as ability. Because the sacred law did not come with that. What's most important here is those Arabic words, qudra and istita'a. Don't get too confused about the English words, though, because they're all translations. They're all translations in the first place. Yani. Allah attributed to himself Al-Qudra and al quwa in Arabic. That's what came in the revelation. Not Istita'a. That didn't come in the revelation. Also, the word power didn't come in the revelation and the word ability didn't come in the revelation. So, we usually say power and we don't say usually Allah has ability. You might hear someone say Allah has the ability. Yani, you don't have to get on his case about that. Because the sacred law did not come with that, with istita'a. Whatever is related or pertains to this attribute is a maqdur, a subject of power. That means something controlled, maqdur, something controlled. Whatever is pertaining to power is controlled. He said, Azza wa Jal wa yakhluqu ma la ta'lamun. He creates what you do not know. That's also there makes you understand that he can create anything possible. He creates what you don't even know. He creates what you never even thought of. Didn't he say in the Hadith Qudsi, أَعَدَدْتُ لِعِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحِينَ I have prepared for my pious slaves مَا لَا عَيْنُ الرَّأَتْ 
what no eye has seen. Wala udunun samiat and what no ear has heard. Wala khatara ala qalbi bashar and what has never crossed anyone's mind. He has the power to make all creations die and to annihilate the existence of all things and to multiply the number of creations many more times than they are and create duplicates of them. All of that is possible. He has the power to send prophets, to reveal books, and to make miracles occur for the prophets to prove their truthfulness. He has the power to resurrect and gather the creations to reward them for obedience and to punish them for sins. All of those possibilities have proof from the religious texts. The scholar said that the power is not related to the intellectual necessity or impossibility. The power of Allah is not related to or does not pertain to, that's two words for you there, related to or pertain to. The power of Allah is not related to or does not pertain to the intellectual necessity or impossibility. So it pertains to the possibility like we just showed examples of. The existence of Allah is necessary, an intellectual necessity, and not the result of someone creating. So power is not related to the intellectually necessary. Yani, no one made the necessary one exist. No power made the necessary one exist. Not his own power, nor anyone else's power. The impossible, like a partner for God, does not enter into existence. So power is also not related to it. Yani, no power brings the impossible into existence. No power brings the impossible, the impossible into existence. Because the impossible does not accept existence, doesn't come into existence. That doesn't mean that God is weak. That means that there's a limitation for the creation. It doesn't mean God is weak. It means the creation has a limitation. Some, like Ibn Hazm, think that saying power is not related to the necessary or the impossible is attributing weakness to him, to Allah. He said that Allah has the power to take on a son or else he would be weak and unable. This is not attributing weakness to Allah. Rather, his claim is a validation of the impossible. His claim validates the impossible. It deems the impossible possible. Yani, his claim uh, warps reality. And it is a question of the atheists and it is the question of the atheists and Christians. They say, Can Allah create something like himself? Can Allah create a son or similar for himself? Can Allah destroy himself or create a rock that he cannot lift? So you see which are of those are from the Christian and which of those are from the atheist. But all of those are the same question, essentially. The answer, all of these questions are in essence the same question, which is a question about the impossible. The question is blasphemy and invalid. You can't ask that. That's kufr. Any one of those asking, that's kufr. The question is invalid. What makes it invalid is that it is a close-ended question, meaning that it requires only a yes or a no, 
but both answers are incorrect. Uh, so, it's an invalid question. So the person will say, how is that invalid? And he might even be offended by that. So how can you say that that's an invalid question? He might think there's no such thing as an invalid question. So what makes that an invalid question? What makes it invalid is that it's a question that requires yes or no only. It's all it requires. Yes or no. And both answers are wrong. Which I, Whichever one you answer is wrong. So if the question demands yes or no, and whichever one you answer, it's a wrong answer, then that means the question is invalid. We do not say that Allah has power over them or does not have power over them. We simply say that the power of Allah is not related to or does not pertain to them. Nothing weakens him, like Abtahawi said, Wala shay'a yu'ajizuh. Nothing disables him. Mm. He said, what's the proper way to answer those questions? There's the answer right there. It says in bold letters, the answer, all of these questions are in essence the same question, which is a question about the impossible. The question is blasphemy and invalid. What makes it invalid is that it is a close-ended question, meaning that it requires only a yes or a no. But both answers are incorrect. We do not say that Allah has power over them or does not have power over them. We simply say that the power of Allah is not related to them. Uh, period. There. That's the end of the answer. That's clear? You can break that up there. All of that, you can break that apart. You don't need to say all of that in your answer to someone. Uh, 